Welcome everyone. My special guest today is Pepe Caviola, and he is here with his niece, Michaela, just in case we have any problems with English. Pepe says he doesn't speak English all that well, but uh, we've talked a little bit. I think his English is very multibene, but uh, I can also translate a little bit too, but sometimes it's, it's tough to think on the, on the spot. So we've got several of my friends. Ofer, nice to see you again. So Pepe, tell us a little bit about, um, with the harvest coming up very soon, uh, what, uh, what the vineyards look like. The, the harvest uh, at the moment, uh, especially in Piedmont, uh, the harvest, uh, I think that uh, will be very interesting because uh, we had uh, a good uh, summer uh, with uh, normal temperature, not too, too hot. And uh, fortunately, uh, with uh, uh, rainfall, uh, with storms, uh, without uh, hail, problem or hail, about hail. And uh, at the moment, uh, all of the Piedmontese varieties are in a very good uh, condition. Uh, probably next week, uh, I uh, will pick uh, the first uh, vineyard of Giorgetto that, uh, as you know, is an uh, early um, uh, grape variety. Right. Uh, and, uh, but at the moment, uh, uh, we are... Uh, we are uh, no, hopefully, we'll we be hope a very great harvest. Exactly. Was there much rain this year? Um, the, uh, in, Piedmont, in Piedmont, not much, but uh, we can say uh, uh, normal and uh, at uh, the correct time. Uh, and uh, it's uh, different, for example, in other regions where I work as wine consultant. Uh, for example, in Tuscany, uh, fortunately, uh, rained uh, only uh, yesterday and uh, the day before in uh, in the Brunello area, yeah. where uh, until two days ago, uh, two or three days ago, uh, grapes uh, were in, uh, in uh, stress, in, uh, in water stress. But fortunately, more fortunately, in two days, uh, we had about uh, uh, 60 millimeters of uh, providential, we can say, uh, rain. Okay. So uh, we hope that uh, will be a, we hope a good, uh, a good uh, vintage uh, there. More or less like the 16 or uh, 13. Okay, those are excellent vintages. Uh, which producer do you uh, consult for in the Montalcino? In Montalcino, uh, for, I work for uh, Castillo del Bosco. Okay. And, uh, and I just started with uh, Poggio Antico a few months ago. Okay. Um, and then ago. what other, besides the Tuscany, what other regions are you in working Tuscany, with? In Tuscany, uh, I work for uh, um, Sette Ponti. Sure. Uh, in Arezzo. Arezzo. Uh, yes. Uh, Petra, Sugareto. Uh, and um, Terenzi in the uh, Scansano area, Morellino di Scansano. Okay. And are there, are there other regions you were working in? Sorry? Ci, ci sono altre regioni to... Yes, uh, yes, yes. Other, other, other regions are uh, um, Marche for Romani Ronchi. Oh, sure, okay. Uh, yes, Sardinia for uh, Surau and uh, Selenosca. Uh, Veneto, Carugate, uh, Sicily, Ferdo Macari, and, uh, and obviously in Piedmont for uh, uh, some wineries uh, in the Barolo area, Barbaresco area especially, in, in, uh, and in Doyano. In Doyano. Uh, some wineries uh, are uh, in Doyani, uh, Chionetti, in Audi, uh, a Bona Marziano, uh, in the Barolo area da Milano, uh, Borgogno, 
eh, di Etti Fonio, eh, in Barbaresco, Eria, eh, Rocca, Albino, eh, Nata Fiorenzo. Okay. I, know, I know the people at Albino Rocca very well, Daniela and her sisters. Yeah. Beautiful wine. So, so uh, this time of the year, do you get any sleep? And, and Cabernet. Uh, okay. This time? Yeah, this, this time of the year with the harvest, I mean, in all these wineries you work for, I mean, do you ever get a chance to sleep or are you since uh, working all the time? No, no. <laughs> uh, just uh, five, six hours maximum. Okay. Well, that's, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. It's a period. It's a busy period for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to talk more about that. Tell me about how you yeah. got started in this because it, 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 you're one of the top consulting analogists in all of Italy. So how did that start out with your, with your consulting business? Tell me a little bit about uh, your, your story. I, I started uh, in uh, between 1996 and 1997 with uh, just uh, a few uh, wineries only in, uh, in Piedmont, but only in the, in the, Lange, uh, in the Lange area. Uh, one of the first uh, wineries that uh, I, uh, I uh, worked at the time uh, was uh, Villa, Villa Sparina in the Gavi area, just outside you know, the Lange. The, the and uh, and, uh, and uh, in the Lange, the, the, the cellar that uh, I uh, told you before, and, uh, and then uh, in 2002, I uh, became an homologist of the year for uh, uh, in Gambaro and, and Slow Food. And so uh, after, uh, after that, uh, this is an uh, important uh, award, award, I started to work uh, outside uh, the, the, my region uh, in, uh, in Tuscany. Uh, in the market uh, for uh, in the market for Romani Rompi and uh, in Veneto with Carugate and then uh, step by step in Toscany uh, with uh, La Farina in in, uh, in, in, in Maremma uh, near Grosseto and then uh, uh, Sette Ponti and, and the others uh, and uh, and as you know, uh, I, uh, I own my uh, small uh, winery uh, called Cabiola, uh, yeah. where I produce uh, Rocetto, Barbera, Barolo, only white wine, uh, made with 100% Riesling, and, uh, and a, few bottles, uh, a few bottles of Rosé made with Mediola. Okay. You are from Lamora, is that correct, originally? In La Mora, in La Mora I, uh, I follow uh, Mario Marengo and, uh, and Bobbio. Bobbio, the owner of the restaurant, famous restaurant Bobbio, but okay. Bobbio is a uh, great uh, Barolo too. A small quantity, but great quality, fun quality. Yeah. Okay, and now you, you turn, go ahead, Prego. No, no, no. Okay. You started your own label, the Caviola, in 1991, is that correct? Yes, yes, with, with uh, a few bottles of uh, my, my dolcetto called uh, uh, Bartolotto, uh, that uh, at the time I rented a part of uh, this uh, old vineyard uh, called Bartolotto, and um, at the time inside uh, the grapes, uh, uh, this is small quantity in the garage of my parents. Okay. Uh, yeah, with, with the less uh, about uh, 100, uh, no, sorry, 800 uh, bottles. Wow, that's tiny. Small, 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 small quantity. And uh, in 1992, the first Barbera Brigulu was born, uh, my uh, Barbera. But at that time, uh, Barbera da Brigulu was uh, uh, not Barbera, but Vino uh, da Dino da. Uh, because uh, uh, it was aged in Barrique, only in Barrique, and um, the DOC Commission um, wasn't able uh, to judge um, a, a wine aged in Barrique, this modern style, and um, often the DOC Commission uh, 
rejected the wine, no? And so uh, these uh, a few bottles of, of brick glue made with 100% Barbera on the label, uh, I um, the, there was Dino da Tavola, no? Uh, just to avoid this this, this problem. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that story, and I always find it. I'm I'm never surprised when I hear a story like that with Italian wine laws. They're just so strange, but. Yeah. I, it, they're strange everywhere, but they're they're especially strange in Italy. But I don't need to tell you that. So now with the with, with all of your wines, with the Barbera and Dolcetto and Riesling and and Barolo, do you own any vineyards, or is it all fruit that you're purchasing? Uh, I, I I own uh, all the vineyard, but only I rent at the moment only the vineyard of uh, Riesling that is. Uh, not uh, in Montelupo where I was born, and there I uh, own about 12 uh, camions, mm -hmm. 12 hectares, two hectares in Morello, the name of the crew is Sotto Castello, and about less than two hectares in Cissone, in Cissone I produce the Riesling, but I rent the vineyard because it's not mine. Okay, this is the oh, I got the Barolo, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Barolo. Riesling here, the Riesling, I'm <laughs> sorry. Is cool. yeah, no problem. No, no, no. That, that is Barolo. Okay, I don't have the bottle in front of me. I'm sorry. We have. We have We are. Okay. <laughs> it's it's a little earlier here than Clem. The yes. only white wine that we produce, which yeah. is called Langhe Riesling from Riesling Renano, 100 percent. And the the name Clem, what is what does that signify? Because so that is the, we can say the nickname, yeah. uh, the nickname of my father, Clemente, okay. is the name, but uh, uh, we call him Clem, and uh, it's, I dedicated, mm -hmm. I dedicated the, this label to my father. And, um, and the rosé uh, is, uh, this is, this is the, the rosé, so 100% Nebbiolo grapes. Yeah, it's the last one, last wine that we started to produce. First vintage, 2019. Okay. And Ruta is the name of my uh, mother that unfortunately uh, uh, this uh, uh, June uh, passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. I, I, uh, one year ago, I, uh, I uh, dedicate uh, this uh, uh, rosé to my uh, to my mom that uh, fortunately appreciated uh, uh, this uh, this wine. Uh, and so for me now this wine has uh, a particular the, uh, yeah of the, the the wine is the signature of Rita. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great, and. I'm, I'm glad to see you make one. I know we, I talk with friends all the time and we're so happy to see Rosato made from Nebbiolo because it's, the wines are wonderful and we wish there were more people making Rosato from Nebbiolo because there's yeah. such a different style than Provence. Everybody wants to drink Provence. Yeah. Which no, are very, nice, very nice wines, but yours are, you know, the Nebbiolo style. It's a light rosé. Light rosé, very right. elegant. Uh, and uh, uh, the fermented part, uh, uh, fermented part in stainless steel and part in uh, in tonneau, uh, but only for uh, in tonneau only for about two months, and then I uh, I blend it uh, then, uh, and uh, it's uh, I think uh, very very interesting wine. Good. Now with with the riesling. I have one yeah. friend in Piemonte that makes Riesling, and I asked him why he made Riesling, and he said it's his favorite variety. So why, why did you decide to make Riesling? But, uh, because uh, um, I, uh, a few years ago, uh, I uh, tasted a, a Riesling, but uh, a few hectoliters of Riesling made in, uh, in uh, that uh, vineyard. And uh, I uh, immediately, I, you know, I, uh, I loved uh, this, uh, this wine. 
And so, uh, after a few months, I rented uh, this vineyard because the owner is a woman and um, who uh, lives not in Italy but uh, in France. Okay. And, uh, and, and, uh, and so decided uh, to, to produce just a uh, bottle, a bottle, a few bottles, so some went to smooth and about uh, 4,000 bottles uh, of, of this reading. Okay, and, and the, the, tell me about the, the vineyard itself, and the soils and the elevation, how many meters? Yeah. Uh, exactly. The, 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 the municipality is Cisone. Cisone is close to Doliani, but uh, at uh, six, the vineyard is at uh, 600 meters. And uh, the soil is uh, white and uh, calcareous, uh, rich in uh, gesso. Uh, uh, no, gesso is uh, chalk. Uh, chalk, see. Yes. Chalk, gesso. Chalk uh, and calcareous, um, and uh, at 600 meters, uh, we have a, a good uh, excursion between uh, night and day. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, usually, uh, this type of, of Riesling has uh, good freshness, good acidity, and uh, it's uh, a, a, a mineral mineral white wine, um, aged only in stainless steel, not oak, and um, we um, release uh, it uh, the, um, after, after one year. One year. Yeah. One year. So at the moment we, we are uh, selling the selling 2018. 2018. Okay, I, I tasted the 2017 enjoyed it very much especially immediately you you get that petrol aroma like you get in yeah. some of the best german rieslings so yeah. it uh, are there different strains of riesling in italy there is uh, you, you mentioned on the back label it's sort of rhine riesling correct other uh, 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 in piedmont uh, uh, that are very very good riesling we have uh, a Torre Germano with the uh, Yetsu, a Baira, uh, very, very good. And, uh, and then in other region, uh, in, uh, especially in, uh, in uh, Alto Adige, Trentino, especially in, in Alto Adige. Right. I, I, I was asking about the, the different clones of Riesling. Is, is there one particular clone in, in Italy or in Piemonte? Or? Yes, I have a, a particular um, Alsatiano, Alsatian, Alsatian clone, uh, and, um, and uh, Mosella um, okay. clone, both Alsatiano and Mosella. German, yes. okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and, and how many bottles did you say again did you produce? About uh, 4,000 bottles. All right. Let's move on to the traditional yes. variety. So let's start with the Dolcetto. And uh, this is the Vilot. Yes. This is 2018. This is the 18, 2018. Vilot um, um, is uh, a blend of different vineyards that I, uh, I got in Monte Lupo, Ardesa, where I was born. And, and, excuse me. Yes. You tell people where exactly Monte Lupo is located. Ah, where is Monte Lupo? Yes. Uh, Monte Lupo is uh, near Alba uh, and is uh, close uh, close to uh, Serra Lunga. Uh, okay. right. And the soil is uh, the same soil of Serra Lunga. And uh, all my vineyards are very close to Serra Lunga and uh, the Cru Cerretta of Serra Lunga. No? Okay, no, that exactly. uh, was an idea. Uh, this, this soil is uh, Erbeziano soil and uh, it's uh, um, a soil uh, ideal for, uh, especially for red, uh, red wines, um, for Dolcetto, Barbera, and maybe other two. And uh, Dolcetto Vilotto. 
is uh, a blend of different linear, uh, not uh, too old, average uh, uh, age is uh, 25, uh, 27 uh, years, uh, years old. Right, right. Um, and uh, uh, for me, the Vilotto is a typical uh, Dolcetto d'Alba uh, with the fruity and floral beans. Uh, and uh, for me, you can you can uh, taste uh, the um, violet, uh, no, violetta, the violet uh, flower, no? and uh, cherry, beans, ciliegia, uh, marasca and um, has a good acidity, but not too much acidity because dolcetto, the, the, the name means dolce, not sweet, because the, the, the grapes are um, uh, not, uh, um, uh, the grapes um, don't have uh, a lot of acidity, Barbera has more acidity, no, as you know. Exactly, yes. Exactly, and so with soft tanning, uh, but uh, with uh, for me uh, character okay is not a, only a easy wine to drink because it's complex uh, is uh, with soft tanning uh, and uh, and character that uh, brings out uh, the, the, the the characteristic of the soil or of the soil. No? Okay. And also the name Bilocchio mm. is in uh, Piedmontese dialect. So it means villa. All the name of our wines are in the Piedmontese yes. dialect. Okay. Well, yeah. You make a second dolcetto. I don't have a bottle if you could show it to yeah. It's the bar okay. which was also the first label that we started to produce in 1991. Okay. With eight bottles. So it's a single vineyard. This dolcetto is a single vineyard more than 75 years old. Uh, that means uh, uh, it's a exactly. Uh, look at the, the, the exactly uh, very old, very old, close to the uh, Barbera Bridulu, eh? uh, yeah. and uh, and so uh, is uh, a particular type of of dolcetto uh, that uh, ages uh, very well. Uh, more than 10, 15 years, and so uh, the production, uh, because the vineyard is very old, uh, is about 40, 45 quintals per hectare, and uh, the maturation is longer than uh, the, the lot maturation, and uh, the aging is different. For the lot, I uh, use only stainless steel uh, for a few months. For the Marturot, uh, I um, I use a big um, a big barrel for uh, nine or ten months, it de depending on, on the vintage. But not barrique, not uh, toasted, right. Oak, right. but only big and Slavonian uh, Slavonian oak, not toasted. Okay. Because the certo Barturot is particular. And do you do made it, did you make that decision just to? Do it make a more complex dolcetto or does it add texture or what is the main reason? Yes, uh, Dolcetto Barturot is uh, a, a full body wine uh, with um, texture, um, rich in uh, polyphenol compounds, anthocyanins, and uh, with good, uh, good acidity, a very long after taste. And uh, because the, the, the vineyard is, uh, is uh, very, very old and, uh, and uh, a singular vineyard. And so uh, I think that uh, this type of dolcetto, uh, sometimes after uh, five, ten years, uh, when you taste with a blind tasting the wine, you can sometimes you can't recognize that it is a dolcetto because it ages very well. It's, um, for me, it's uh, a very interesting and uh, very good uh, dolcetto with a lot of character. I've not tried the uh, Arthurot yet, but I have tried the Vilot and, and enjoyed it. And it's not yeah. the typical 
one dimensional, very fruity yeah. It has a lot of complexity to it and a lot of backbone. So and it can age you for years. So complimenting. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you also about, about Dolcetto. And I know that I visit Piemonte all the time whenever they let me fly there. Not this year, but, but um, and I know some wineries have stopped producing Dolcetto because they say it's too expensive. It's too difficult. Too many, too much time in the vineyards. Um, so Thank you for continuing to produce Dolcetto. I love it. I know many of the people that are watching are, are big fans of Dolcetto. Um, what are your thoughts about that? I mean, uh, is it, do you find it to be a very difficult grape to work with or is it, is it, do you, do you do it for tradition or what is the reason you continue to produce Dolcetto? Uh, Dolcetto is, is very difficult to manage the, 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 the Dolcetto in the, before in the vineyard. Uh, and and then uh, and then uh, uh, during the winemaking and the aging, because uh, Dolcetto uh, is uh, a wine that uh, uh, can um, um, reduce, no? uh, can have problem of reducing reduction uh, exactly yeah. echo, uh, to the nose, and uh, and um, and because if you want to produce a great Dolcetto. You have to keep under control the production, no? And uh, and so dolcetto uh, to, to make a great a great dolcetto, uh, you have a lot of um, you have to do a lot of work, and it's uh, an expensive wine. But unfortunately, people uh, don't understand and sometimes uh, don't uh, appreciate the the dolcetto. And, uh, and and this is uh, it's uh, one of um, sorry, not really, one of the way uh, one of the reason that uh, sometimes people that people stop uh, to produce uh, dolcetto uh, because uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, in terms of uh, hmm, save money and economics is not convenient right right you, you, right not convenient. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we have to remind remind people what a good wine it is, and that also, you know, if you if you're having lunch in Piemonte or lunch anywhere, I mean, you don't pull out a bottle of Barolo for lunch. You save that for dinner. Yeah, it's exactly. Not, it's just like you have the same food every time, every night, or every yeah. every meal. So there's there's a lot of charm, and of course a lot of tradition with Dolcetto. So, um, and um, it, it quality wise, I don't think it needs. To be making excuses, it's just a different style of wine, and uh, of, course, of course, the Longhi is so famous for Nebbiolo and Barolo and Barbaresco, so Dolcetto gets overshadowed. But uh, again, thank you for continuing to make that wine. Thank you too. So let, let's talk about Barbera. I don't have the bottles in front of me, but you have two briquettes and briquettes. We, we produce. Uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> we produce uh, two types now of Barbera. Uh, the most important uh, is the Brigulou and, and the, 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 the sorry and the entry level Barbera is the, the briquette. Uh, this is the Brigulou. Uh, first, uh, we have the briquette. Briquette is a blend of different linear and um, and uh, it's uh, a good uh, a good Barbera, very balanced. Uh, it, we can say easy to drink, but uh, but uh, a Barbera with uh, with a character with good acidity, typical for the Barbera, uh, aged uh, uh, not in stainless steel, but about uh, twelve months uh, in uh, in a big uh, barrel, uh, just uh, one two tonneau uh, with. Uh, it depends, uh, 10, uh, maximum 15% new oak. Uh, this is, that is the, the, the Barbera briquette. The Brigulou is a single vineyard. The vineyard is a very um, old vineyard, uh, close to the Barcurotto, more or less the same age, more than uh, 75 years old. Uh, and um, uh, we are organic in the vineyard. Okay, we are organic because we don't use uh, any type of pesticides, uh, herbicides, uh, 
um, and uh, all my red only red wines are not filtered. Uh, and um, and uh, in, uh, we don't use, uh, uh, I prefer, uh, don't use selected yeast, but indigenous. Okay. Uh, uh, I, today, I just uh, uh, picked, I, 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 I tried to explain, I just picked a few cases, case of Dolcetto, Bartur, of Dolcetto, Barturot and Bilot. Uh, more or less seven, ten days before the harvest, no, before the harvesting, right. harvest, before the harvest, because uh, I prefer my uh, indigenous uh, yeast seven, ten days before uh, harvesting the grapes with my yeast, with indigenous yeast. But uh, I, have, I have to try, no. Because sometimes uh, the natural fermentation uh, has problem uh, about uh, volatile acidity, acetato di etile, and so uh, it's for me it's better to try and to pick seven, ten days before. Uh, in this way, just uh, about 100 kilos of uh, dolcetto okay. and. Uh, uh, to try uh, and uh, to start uh, the fermentation with uh, indigenous uh, uh, yeast. Okay. Do, you, do, you, do you do that only with Dolcetto or also with Barbera and Nebbiolo? Dolcetto, Barbera and, uh, and, uh, and Nebbiolo. Okay. But yeah. if, if I have a problem, if uh, because the vintage uh, is not perfect, because to the nose is not perfect, because the volatile uh, acid is uh, too high, uh, I use only in this way selective. It depends, you know, to be honest. You know? uh, uh, this, uh, um, the, the, the Barbera Bentulu uh, is uh, um, the, the, the aging is uh, the maturation is longer than uh, the briquette, and uh, the aging is only in uh, uh, we say botticelle, small. Uh, uh, Small uh, that uh, are um, ten hectoliters. Ten. Uh, okay. ten hectoliters. Right, uh, right. So, no barrique, I don't use barrique or tono, but only uh, these uh, ten hectoliters uh, yeah. bar. Yeah. And uh, Barbera now is 100% Barbera, uh, and the name is Brick. Brick Dulu. Brick in Piedmontese means the top yeah. no? of the hill, and Lulu uh, is the wall. Because, uh, because uh, the, 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 Lupo, uh, say, the, the logo no? of Monte Lupo Albese, the village where I was born, uh, uh, show uh, the logo of Monte Lupo, the wolf uh, on, on, on the, the hill, on the top of the hill. And okay. so uh, the, the, the graphic artist Gianni Gallo uh, decided at that time uh, to put in the in the label wolf or wolves or more than one on the Barcarot label. Okay, I'm curious. You mentioned how you will pick a small amount of grapes early to to get the yeast. Is that something you do also in the other regions you work in? And Sardinia and Toscana and... Yes, yes. I, I, um, for me, it's, um, it's, uh, it's important to respect uh, the, the, the natural characteristic, not only about the grapes, but uh, the, the, the area, for me, is very, very important. Not all my clients, but... Uh, uh, step by step, uh, I for I um, yeah. I give this advice to okay. to to improve not only to improve the quality but to respect the the, um, the natural characteristic. Uh, okay. But uh, it, it depends uh, on the vintage if uh, the, the the grapes are healthy or not. It's not a regular history. Do it every year, right? right. It is that a common practice among your fellow analogists to do that to pick the, some grapes early for yeast? 
sorry? It, this practice of, of harvesting a few grapes early to, to use the indigenous yeast, is that, yeah. is that uh, common among your fellow enologists? Is that typical? This is, um, to be honest, I, I don't know. If, uh, in, um, in my case, uh, I, um, I, uh, I started uh, about, uh, it was uh, uh, 2002. Uh, to use uh, indigenous yeast uh, with uh, a good result, but not always. And, uh, and so, uh, this is my, my experience. In my experience uh, I improve, uh, I improve this, the, the quality uh, following uh, this process. Uh, that means uh, uh, to harvest seven, ten days before, just to smell and uh, and uh, to taste uh, the, the the result. It is uh, the, the, that we say the cool, no? Uh, and the start. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's move on to Barolo. You yes. Two different Barolo. Caveat. Uh, Barolo, um, we produce uh, two, um, two, two types. So Barolo, uh, Barolo uh, Caviot, and uh, that is uh, our um, basic uh, classic, classic version. That's it, Barolo. Barolo classic. Barolo classic, exactly. And, uh, and the Barolo Sotto Castello. Um, I own uh, two hectares in, uh, in uh, Castello. Uh, Sotto Castello is uh, this crew uh, close yeah. to the Ravera crew. I'll put up a picture here. It's a gorgeous vineyard. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yes. Uh, Sotto, Sotto Castello. Um, Sotto, Ca Sotto Castello together with the. Uh, with Ravera is the most important crew of, uh, of the Novello Commons. And uh, I uh, own one, two, a three uh, plot. No? And uh, the exposure is south, is south, southeast. And uh, the altitude is um, about four, uh, 400 uh, uh, meters. Uh, 420 in the highest point, uh, but about 400. And, uh, and the, the, I'm going to put another photo here to give people an idea of what. Yes, exactly. So, exactly. Those are, those are the Cotian Alps behind, right? Yeah. And uh, it's very steep. Um, very steep, very steep slope. Uh, slope. And, um, and excellent exposure uh, that um, guarantees uh, luminosity and um, refreshing uh, uh, breezes, uh, ideal for uh, a perfect uh, ripening and a good uh, phenolic uh, maturation, especially for, for, for the Nebbiolo. Yes. Novello, as we can see there, is very well exposed. You got a beautiful exposure to the sun, and you have a lot of breezes, and, and so that provides a yeah. lot of acidity to the wines, right? Exactly, acidity, freshness, uh, elegance, uh, balanced with, uh, especially when the, the vintage is, we can say, classic. That and classic, classic vintage for us means uh, not too hot, too hot, but classic. Uh, uh, with the uh, warm but not hot uh, summer and uh, good uh, uh, September, October. Uh, and in this way, uh, the Bimbarolo both has um, very interesting uh, balsamic hints, uh, mint hints, with freshness, good acidity, and uh, both ages uh, very, very well. Uh, thanks uh, uh, this uh, acidity and freshness. No? Um, how many uh, 
or excuse me, I'm not how many, uh, how old are the vines that you work with? At, at uh, uh, the, the, the first um, uh, vintage, uh, yes. The, uh, the first vintage uh, of the, the Barolo was 2006, and uh, I uh, planted the vineyard uh, between 2002-2003. And uh, at the beginning, I uh, rented the vineyard, and then I, uh, I bought a few years ago uh, the, the, the screen. Okay. Now, the, the, I've just tasted the Soto Castello from 2015. I've not tasted the 2016 yet, but um, tell us, a, 2016 to me is, is one of the two best vintages so far of the decade along with 2010. I think it's an outstanding vintage. So tell us a little bit about 2016, about what? Yes. See, because uh, you know that uh, 2016, I, I, I agree, is one of the most important one of the uh, most important uh, vintage because 16, uh, as uh, I said before, is uh, a, a classic uh, Barolo vintage. Uh, because uh, in, uh, in 2000, uh, 2016, uh, the spring uh, was with um, plenty of rain uh, that guarantee is a good um, a reserve of water uh, for the soil and uh, the summer uh, with uh, characterized uh, by a good temperature, storms, a uh, good temperature but uh, not too hot. Uh, and uh, in uh, September, October, um, very interesting and perfect for the ripening of the Nebbiolo with uh, night uh, uh, fresh, uh, cool and uh, warm during the day and, uh, and we uh, picked uh, the, the, the Barolo not early but uh, mid-October uh, uh, and so uh, it was very balanced with uh, freshness, with acidity, um, and, uh, and, and good tannin, uh, but not, uh, um, uh, not uh, green uh, tannin, no, but present, but soft, and uh, very balanced, no? yes. and, and good uh, and freshness. What, what other years? in the past, can you compare with 2016? That uh, 2016, oh. uh, I think that uh, uh, we have not 2015, because 2015 is, was warmer than 16. 2013, uh, it's uh, another uh, interesting uh, and uh, uh, classic uh, uh, vintage uh, that uh, more or less uh, has uh, the same characteristic, not uh, more, more or less, uh, and uh, in 2010 too, uh, 2009 was warmer, 2010, 13, uh, 16, uh, I think that for my, my, my Barolo or my Barolo uh, are, um, um, have this uh, characteristic, this freshness, uh, uh, this uh, mint uh, hint uh, and uh, balsamic uh, hint. Okay. Mm. And I, I don't think we mentioned uh, the aging on the Soto Castello. Is uh, only yes. Botti? Yes, only Botti, long maturation, only with uh, <coughs> pumping over, pumping over, remontaggi, and uh, the maturation lasts about uh, 30 and post maturation, not post right. maturation, and post maturation lasts about 30 days. Okay. And the aging is a body, only body, 25, uh, 32 liters. And uh, then uh, when I transfer the wire, uh, the, the, the Barolo, I put it in a cement concrete and uh, not petrified for a few months before bottling. Okay. And how many bottles of the Soto Casello do you produce per year? Uh, I, uh, I, I produce uh, 
in all of between uh, Sotto Castello and, um, and, uh, and uh, Cabiot about uh, 6,000 bottles of Bordeaux. 6,000 Sotto Castello and 6,000 uh, of Cabiot. Okay, and I understand that Cabiot and Piemontese, that's your name, right? Caviola. Yes, yes. Okay. It's my uh, family name, Caviola, Caviot in Piedmont. Yes. Okay. Tell me a little bit about, since I've traveled there so often, I've tasted a few wines from 2018, and every producer tells me they, they think that's going to be an excellent year, and also 2019. People have told me like every, everything is just perfect in 2019. So can you talk a little bit about not just Barolo, but Dolcetto, Barbera? 18 or 19? 18. Uh, both. Both. Yes. Uh, but uh, Dolcetto, uh, I think that um, Dolcetto is uh, better uh, 19 uh, if, you, okay. if you compare 19 to 18. Uh, especially in the Doliani area. Dolcetto was good, but uh, 19 is, uh, is better. And uh, for Barbera, it depends because uh, in the Nizza area, 18 was uh, good, but uh, 19 a little bit better than, than, uh, than 18 at the moment. Uh, because uh, I, uh, I work as a wine consultant in the Nizza area for, for uh, Olimbalda, and uh, both interesting, but in uh, my opinion, 19 is a little bit better. And how about for Barolo? And uh, Barolo, Barolo is, at the moment it's not easy uh, to judge uh, because uh, both are both very interesting. Uh, um, personally, uh, personally, uh, I like uh, I like nineteen, but eighteen too. Uh, uh, probably at the moment Barolo is a little bit young to judge, but nineteen. Uh, it's very balanced uh, uh, with a uh, good uh, tannin, uh, color, acidity, very, very balanced. Uh, probably, I think, but this okay. is my opinion. All right. Yeah. And, and the weather those years, it, it, they were very, very good, very cool weather, right? It's not, not, yes. not as hot as most years, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Very cool and uh, good for the yes. Well, a lot of us are looking forward to these wines. So we have a few minutes left. Um, in terms of where you export, first, how much of the wine do you export? What, what percentage? About yeah, uh, about, uh, about, 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 about production. Okay. Uh, right. Italy and in the, in the uh, export market. Yeah. Okay, and, and what are the, the best markets for you, export markets? Um, actually, it's US, yes. one of this one. Uh, a little bit in Canada also. Uh, in, um, then, if you look at the east part of the world, uh, we sell wines to Japan and China, uh, Australia also a little bit, and in in Europe and, and a little bit of also in South Africa. And then in Europe, we sell our wines uh, to the north of Europe. Uh, also in uh, in England, Denmark, uh, uh, Sweden, etc., and then uh, more close to Italy, to Germany, Belgium, Switzerland, uh, a little bit also in France, uh, Czech Republic. Okay. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not a, a big production, so you think about just a small flag right. in each country. Okay. That's good. Well, we know this year has been a difficult year for everyone, so I, I want to keep positive. So instead of talking yeah. about coronavirus, let's talk about, you know, a situation you have to face over the last 15 years, 20 years, and that's the climate change. So can you yeah. tell me how you've had to make wine differently these past few years? So what, what do you have to yeah. do in the vineyards to adapt to climate change? Um, I, um, I, uh, in the last years, uh, I changed uh, the work uh, in, uh, in the vineyard before. Uh, 
because in the past, uh, uh, in uh, 1991, 92, 93, the weather, especially in Piedmont, was completely different. Uh, uh, rainy, usually rainy in uh, October, November, and uh, we harvested the, the, the Nebbiolo leader uh, at the end of October, sometime uh, the first uh, days of November. And uh, at the time, uh, the, um, we keep under control the production, but uh, with uh, in, uh, my cellar uh, with uh, uh, 40 maximum 40 quintals per hectare. Now uh, it's it, it's important. Uh, now it's completely different because uh, we uh, usually we harvest uh, before then that period, uh, and so I uh, prefer to have uh, uh, more production uh, to obtain. Uh, to have uh, to produce uh, uh, balanced wine uh, with the not too uh, alcohol, but uh, balanced with good acidity. And uh, another thing, at the time uh, we uh, cut, uh, we remove, we cut the, the, the leaves uh, uh, in front of the, the, the grapes. Uh, now, now it's important to protect uh, or to preserve uh, the grapes because the is too hot. And it's so it's uh, we have to preserve the primary test of the grapes, for example. No? And uh, so it's, it's completely different, and uh, and other other important things in the in the cellar, the temperature at the time. Uh, I remember that uh, uh, the maturation, the temperature uh, was uh, uh, more or less 28, 30, 32, 32 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Now I prefer uh, fermenting. Uh, fermenting at uh, um, uh, at 22, 25 uh, to preserve uh, the uh, fruity floral hints and uh, uh, with less pumping uh, over, but uh, just uh, to extract to extract to extract. The, the, um, the, the noble compounds, uh, but uh, in a, a soft uh, way, uh, not uh, with uh, too much pumping over of the style. It's, it's completely different. It's the opposite, we can say. Okay. Right. It's back uh, a few years ago, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, last question, and I want to just talk about pairing up. Barolo and Dolcetto and Barbera with food. So since you have that wonderful vineyard in Novello, and that you probably have dinner once in a while at L'Angelo di Rosina with my friend Luca. Yes. Um, tell me some of your favorite dishes to pair with, with for example, Dolcetto and, and also Barolo. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, for me uh, with the Dolcetto, I, um, I like, uh, as starter, uh, uh, vitello tonnato okay. or, or tallarin with barcurot, tallarin a ragù. Okay. Not only tallarin a ragù, with barcurot, with, uh, with my uh, dolcetto cru. Uh, with, uh, with the barolo, uh, obviously, the, um, the, the, la, the, the barolo, il, il brasato, uh, okay. il brasato, yeah. uh, uh, Brasato al Barolo, but uh, it after, uh, anche um, il come si chiama l'altro? Ah, but uh, anche formaggio stagionato. Okay, wonderful. Well, I grazie per la, questa opportunità. I appreciate grazie. your time. And um, fingers crossed for a great harvest this year. So. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And I hope to see you soon. 
Me too. In uh, we are in Piemont in uh, my cellar. Assolutamente. E sì. da Rosina, e da Rosina, for dinner. Ok, perfetto. Ok. okay. Grazie. Grazie. Grazie, dai, grazie mille. Ciao. Grazie a tutti. See you soon. Okay. Ciao, bye.